Part 3. In this part of the test, you will hear three short segments from a radio program. The program is called Learning from the Experts. Each talk lasts about two minutes. As you listen, you may want to take notes to help you remember information given in the talk. After each talk, you will be asked some questions about what was said. From the three answer choices given, you should choose the one which best answers the question according to the information you heard. Now you will hear segment two. No guts, no glory. It's the battle cry of thrill seekers everywhere as they dive off cliffs, jump out of planes, and ski down avalanche chutes. And they do it all just for the rush. But where do these daredevils get the guts to risk their lives over and over again? Some scientists believe there's something about adventure junkies that's different from the rest of us, something they're born with. Could it be that thrill-seeking is literally in their blood? Dr. Julia Farnsworth is here to explore the latest research with us. Dr. Farnsworth, welcome to the show. What does the latest research show? Is thrill-seeking really inborn? Thanks, Larry. Yes, there is now evidence that thrill-seeking has a strong genetic component. Researchers have identified at least two distinct genes that they believe are responsible for thrill-seeking behavior. Both of these genes have to do with the brain chemical called dopamine, the brain's pleasure chemical. Dopamine is the substance that makes your brain feel all warm and wonderful inside. What researchers have found is that the brains of thrill-seekers don't produce and absorb enough dopamine. This prompts them to go the extra mile to get a dopamine fix, and that means charging into high-sensation activities, ones that really make palms sweat and heart rates soar. That's fascinating. Are there any figures about how many people may actually have these genes? Researchers believe that at least 30% of us carry the thrill-seeking genes, but not everyone who has them, they say, feels the need to jump out of airplanes. For some people, intellectual challenges can provide the same satisfaction, and just having the genes doesn't mean that you will necessarily crave new sensations all the time, which leads critics to argue that the researchers' genetic theory is a little too simplistic. But whether flirting with danger is nature, nurture, or a combination of both, there's no question that it can quickly become a deadly habit. Hundreds of thrill-seekers a year are killed pursuing a rush. Researchers are also exploring whether or not the same genes may play a role in self-destructive adventure-seeking, such as drug and alcohol abuse. So where to from here? What will scientists do with their newfound knowledge? Well, it's still rather unclear. When I asked one researcher if he thought scientists should come up with a cure for self-destructive adventure-seeking, he replied, Without thrill-seekers in the world, we wouldn't have any United States of America, because Columbus never would have taken off. We never would have put a man on the moon, and we wouldn't have Wall Street. I don't think we want to get into the business of treating core personality traits unless they're really harmful to the person. So at least for the moment, listeners, it appears that there's no new wonder drug on the way to take away the urge for adventure. Nor will a blood test be available any time soon to find out whether you have the thrill-seeker genes. But there is good news in store for those of you who are couch potatoes. Scientists say they may also have discovered the gene for laziness. Now you will hear questions 41 through 45. 41. What is the main idea of the segment? Forty-two. What is true of thrill-seekers and the levels of dopamine in their brains? Forty-three. According to scientists, how many people carry the genes for thrill-seeking? Forty-four. 
What is true about people who have the thrill-seeking genes? Forty-five. Why does the speaker mention Columbus, Wall Street, and putting a man on the moon?